It is us. It is I. It is Geek Swag. We are here on the Ladies of the Round Table Nation uh, Twitch channel once again. He Magazine Geek Swag podcast. We're glad to be back, ladies and gentlemen. We hopefully will have a Geek Swag packed show today. Hopefully, the whole team will be able to get here again. We're having scheduling issues. The gremlins are going from like the technology issues to now it's just scheduling issues. Uh, we were hoping to be able to get K, Mr. K Murdoch, the Sound Samurai himself, on today. Uh, he had prior engagements again this week, um, so he had to postpone once again for another week. I apologize. I'm gonna try to see if we can get him on uh, maybe next week, which is like the week right before Thanksgiving. So hopefully all that works out with his schedule and um, he's actually able to jump on with this for a while. Um, hey, when you're successful, you got, you're got you busy, you've got things to do. And, uh, you know, we, we had him scheduled once and we couldn't get it together because of the gremlins. But, ladies and gentlemen, today we got our stuff together. Um, Two cards of us. Yeah, kind of, sort of. Um, Makita... The Grim Freaker herself, she, uh, I think, is going to be on. I know I said that last week, but this time I, I promise it's true. Uh, she actually had a slight auto accident right before the show. So, um, you know, think, you know, to keep her in the prayers or whatever. Uh, she said she was fine and everything was okay. Uh, but she, I think, is dealing with all of that. She's trying to get back home um, so that she can join us on the show. If not, I'm pretty certain me and Thicker Nation can hold it down. But as you know, I am your boy BJ Bunny 3000 along with <laughs> Thicker Nation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dirty Hell Mato himself. Uh, from my understanding, before we even jump into everything, uh, Dirty Hell Mato, um, I hear you yes, actually man. have your YouTube video miss actually going on now for change. It Yes, I do. It's in uh, it's in the beta stages. I've uh, I've uploaded a couple videos, you know, just testing. So, hopefully, by uh, next uh, by the end of this week, I will have uh, a whole bunch of stuff out there. I uh, I threw a couple of um, you know just some Call of Duty stuff that I have mm -hmm. um, on there, just you know, just to make sure everything is uh, working properly. Because mm -hmm, you, know, you think like, you're nice, right? I, I am though. You think he's nice, right? You think he's <laughs> nice. Bit, I, I've actually, I had to like dedicate time, man. I couldn't believe it. Like, I actually, I'm like, you know what? I gotta get this done because, uh, you know, I've been trying to do it for like months, and between work and our basement still ain't done. It's kind of like so. Uh -huh. that uh -huh. you know, you know, you know, all in due time. Yeah, yeah, it'll get done. It'll get done. It'll get done. This is I'm a little I'm a little bent right now because you know it ain't done. Thanks. I was hoping it's kind of like Thanksgiving. Care see, you could you could pretty much call be able to do you, you, you could pretty much call your basement destiny. How about that? Pretty much. Yeah, it's pretty not quite done. It's not ready quite yet. I mean, it's partially ready. You can walk around in it and you can do <laughs> stuff in it, but it's not like complete finish. It doesn't have a lot. Of stuff in it, right? You know. Yeah, that you, you pretty. I got walls, but it's not like taped up or anything. But, right. Uh, right. So I, I'm a little, you know, a little salty. But you know what? The Lord is still good. I still got people willing to help me. So that's all that matters right now. Right. Right. So I got that going. My 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 Twitch is up, and hopefully next week I have all the details. Ready so people go check out some videos, you know. Um, I got a, I got a, um, some reviews that I I did already. I just gotta patch them together, get them uploaded. Um, I'm gonna probably do if I get my hard drive this weekend. I'm gonna do my PS4 one terabyte upgrade. That's mm -hmm. gonna be on there too. How to upgrade your PS4 from the 500 gig to a terabyte? So. Right. Well, people, people that want to get down on that, we'll drive this weekend. Know how to do it? PS4 yeah. first, one terabyte upgrade. That's mm -hmm. gonna be on. That's all I got for that. <laughs> say word, say word. So yes, um, ladies and gentlemen, if you are a gamer, then you understand the problems that we are all having 
this November. This is an amazing month, and uh, this week's new release new releases are definitely proof that you know we have a lot to be happy about. And for some people, there's still a lot to be upset about, depending on what games you're interested in. Yes. But um, uh, if you could, Mr. Thicken Nation, uh, kind of start the little rundown of what we actually have as new releases this week for well, people we to get down on. To, to, get, to get down on, well, from what I can see, there's a plethora of... This is actually a pretty good week. I mean, I couldn't believe all the games that actually came out today. Um, first, you got, you know, Far Cry 4. Oh, that's not what I'm holding I up. Heck, going to see you missing the cue. Heck, going it. You missed the cue. Well, what, what was the cue? Well, look, look at my, look at my face. Look at my I can't face. See face. face. All I see, all I I'm see serious. right now is Dragon uh, Age X Inquisition, son. All I see is an X split. X split. <laughs> oh, that's all you can see? Oh, okay, you like stupid. <laughs> Dragon Age Inquisition. I was trying to get well, him to. Well, get your screen up so I can see you, son. I can't see you. All I see is X split. <laughs> yeah, I've got it actually on. I've got it set up through Skype so that it goes through. You know, it goes through X split. So that's probably okay, why you can't see it. Okay, so that's why I can't see. Yeah, it. yeah, because yeah, otherwise, right, otherwise I'd have to do magic. Bring it back. Roll, like, roll bring it back. Bring it back. Roll, 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 roll. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'll, I'll keep it up. But one of the very first ones, the one that uh, Mr. Thicken Nation himself is probably playing at this very moment, bastard. Um, I am not. Dragon Age. Can't, can't play Dragon Age. Yeah, you like, can't do that and talk at the same time. You gotta yeah, pay he probably he probably shooting people or he dunking on folks. I don't know. It's one of the other. <laughs> yeah, but one of those. Dragon Age Inquisition, ladies and gentlemen, if you have if yes. you have not heard the word. The word is that this game is probably one of the newest standards for action RPGs uh, to date, and that's a quotable from me, not from anybody else. Um, and honestly, I haven't even Actually, played no, the game no, yet. No, no, no! Believe it or not, that's what a lot of um, reviews that I read are saying. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, I I have not played the game. But I have watched a lot of the Twitch feeds that Bioware has been has set up before you know the game's release, um, so I kind of knew what I was getting into in terms of saying that I was eager to see it and play it, you know, just from what they had been talking about. The developers were very very good about not only talking about the features but showing off those features as they talked about them, so that you weren't surprised and said, "Oh, we're still building." You know, we're still adding this. I mean, each week um, up to today where everyone's doing marathons, they were showing off the final build of the game and what was available, what you could do, what you could customize, what you could play as, what would be on the game, you know, what they are planning hopefully to bring even later on for the game, you know, in terms of like multiplayer and multiplayer editions and the multiplayer mode itself. But dude, I love Bioware, and this, honestly, this game, this wasn't, I won't say that this game or this franchise was the first reason why I fell in love with Bioware, because that's not true. Baldur's Gate was really the first reason. But um, this was one of the first franchises that made me fall back in love with Bioware on consoles. Um, I, I, I'm really, 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 really happy about you know all the things I've heard about the game so far, and I honestly I can't wait. So with that said, everybody, we're gonna end the show right now so I can go play. Click. <laughs> Actually, I, I I have about half an hour experience. <laughs> half an hour experience. Oh yes. Yeah. So give us our your expert opinion on the game as a whole. What would you rate it as in your thirty minutes of gameplay, Thicken Nation? Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Ah, ten of ten, right? Game of the year. Game of the year. I'm going home. Talking <laughs> <about it. laughs> now, actually, um, you know, um, you can you can see a lot of um, Mass Effect in it. Mass Effect. I think. That, yep, you're gonna see a lot of that, especially you know with the conversational pieces and mm -hmm. and how you can you know gain favor with conversations. So you, you see those things early off in the game. Um, you actually um, the actually combat system. Um, 
which you know I I got a limited scope on it, um, but it's I actually like it mm -hmm. because you, you know me I hated those turn based games yeah like, nuts, man. Like, you know in this day and age of all the computing power we have why do you want to play a turn based game you still got because it's fun don't know why XCOM is fun it's, have you ever played XCOM before. I have, and I don't like turn based. It drives me nuts. It's it drives me nuts. It is stupid. You it, know why? It, it helps strategy. Because, that's why. You just don't like strategy. Well, games, here's too. no, <laughs> but here's here's the thing that they delivered in Dragon Age. Okay, mm -hmm. you they give you both elements of that, so mm -hmm. you can control your guy. Yep. Your your four players that you got with you, mm -hmm. and you, before the battle happens, you can stop the game, and. Tell people who to attack who with what what power and how often. Yes. So you get all of that, which which I love. So I you know it's it's not a turn base. It's still you it's know, really real -time it's, it's RTS it's real basically. Yes. So you know you you still got your real time you know your real time strategy thing going on there. So you know you pause it. You say I'm gonna do this this and this, and you jump into the game and you actually do what you got to do. I think that's what I hated about turn base because it took. It took the action out of it, which I like, and I and I think that's why I like gaming because of action. You know, I love sports game because there's a lot of action. You know, mm -hmm. Call of Duty, a lot of action. You know, um, you know, the, even the Sky, even the other, the newer RPGs, which you know they, they give you a lot of action in it. You know, it's just it's just well put together. So from that, from that, from like that combat aspect of it, I. I just, you know, you just get geeked out because I'm like, yo, this is going to be fun. I can do this. You know, I'm going to make this armor. I'm going to spend 50 hours running around just chopping things up, you know, all this stuff. And I can't wait to get there. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to get there because I'm just, I'm in the beginning, you know. Everything hasn't opened up yet. I've, I've, see, I've seen my map a little bit. And I'm like, yeah, I'm about to mm, do this, do this, do this. You know, look for this, her. try to find that. <laughs> yeah. And even even in the beginning, you know, like you know how those you know how RPG say starting off, it's very scripted in the beginning until you get of course. to that one base. Not me, man. I was running. I, I had so much stuff in the first half an hour before I even got to like the base where you right. actually start off and you can do things. Mm -hmm. So that's that's kind of what I was doing. I had I had probably about almost a thousand dollars worth of coins already. <laughs> I had, had like armor, you know, and a whole bunch of stuff that, you know, I could, uh, you know, sell off or upgrade and stuff like that. So, right. I'm ex yeah, I'm, I'm very excited. I think this is probably going to keep me busy until, you know, what I'm waiting for to come out, Witcher 3. So, hopefully, you know, I can get my good, you know, 100 plus hours out of this. And uh, keep me busy till February, and then uh, between that, you know, and some Call of Duty, and hopefully these uh, Battlefield maps come out pretty quick. Mm -hmm. And then that, yo, that's that's my next two months right there. Yeah, I'm telling you, dude, I'm I, I'm stuck just to kind of kind of keep the ball rolling on the new releases. You know, we got Far Cry Four, we got Battlefield Four's Final Stand DLC. Yep. We've got uh, the next gen or the new current gen, as I've coined. Um, uh, GTA Five, um, Assassin's Creed Unity. Yeah, Unity. Unfortunately, is still buggy. <laughs> uh, well, that's what I've been hearing about um, Far Cry Four. They're you know they're having some issues there. They're trying to work them out. And... Yeah, yeah, they're they're still doing their thing with that. Same thing for. Uh, for Halo Master Collection, they're still, you know, they're still doing their thing as well. Um, but yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great time to be a gamer. And actually, there's one game in particular that I kind of wanted to, to, I guess you could say feature. And this isn't a paid feature. It's not sponsored. It's not any of that. Um, it's just something that kind of sparked my curiosity. Um, I was actually, uh, I was talking to Dirty Helmato earlier today about this game. Um, I was on the Gaming Precision podcast yesterday, and uh, my co-host there, Ivan Mashkoff, the Tech Curse, he was basically telling me about a game on on uh, Steam because he loves indie games, so he's typically doing a lot of his gaming on PC, anyways. Um, 
But he's been getting down on this one game called This War of Mine. And uh, for those of you that are, you know, that are that follow Zombie Gamer online and Makita, she's actually been doing a marathon um, on her YouTube channel of gameplay of this game also. And um, it's it's honestly in my mind just from hearing about it from Ivan and I haven't really had a chance to see it. But yes, uh, Dirty Helmets, I know we were talking about it earlier. It is a 2D game. It's almost like a platformer, I think. But um, it is a very, very, um, I don't want to say intimate look, but it's a very, very different perspective kind of game. Um, this War of Mine, you know, it's basically a game about survivors in the midst of an actual war. And you take control of this little group of survivors, and every decision that you make essentially has an effect on a psychological effect on uh, the survivors that you teamed up with as well as you know just a, a actual resources effect you know you have to make very very hard decisions about do you steal from these new people you see do you ask them to join you do you kill these people to defend yourself, you know, do you send certain people out to get resources knowing that, you know, they could die any minute because of the war going on around you? Um, you know, it's, it's, there's a, so much going on that um, it's even, it's even, I guess you could say, uh, uh, it even tugs on your heartstrings because you are trying to protect your group so much that, you um, they may not even choose to uh, follow your orders. And, <laughs> you know, some of them may even get depressed after recognizing the truth of what you've asked them to do and what they've actually done. And some may get so depressed to the point where they commit suicide. Wow, so they know, even in the game, they know that you're an ass? They, yeah, me? An ass? <laughs> me? <laughs> me? <laughs> no, Thicken Nation. I am not the asshole here, okay? <laughs> I didn't say asshole. I said ass. It's a difference. So I don't mean. have an ass. I'm, uh, I'm skinny boy. You know, I'm scrawny. I'm, I'm slender man. You know, I don't have it. Uh, that's hard. <laughs> but no, uh, this war of mine, I... I am quickly falling in love with this game just off of hearsay, just off of, you know, people that I trust that have actually played the game. They're really into it. It's, I mean, you know, Ivan's really, really deep into it. He, he's told me it's a very emotional game because you get invested in trying to save these people and trying to help these people and to see them just give up on themselves at times or you know to recognize some of the <laughs> recognize some of your own mistakes and be like oh i shouldn't have done that you know that kind of thing um you know it, it's it to me the concept is uh it's fresh the concept is intriguing it sparked my curiosity and um i'm definitely going to be doing some of my own gameplay pretty soon so Definitely, you guys, if you haven't already, you should go go take a look at, you know, some of the Twitch feeds. I'm sure there's a bunch out right now. Um, go on uh, Grim Freaker's uh, website, Z Gamer Online, I think, on her YouTube channel. Um, I think she has different, you know, I think she's up to, like, part four or something like that of her marathon. So check out her gameplay. Um, you know, stay tuned. Game play, 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 play. Yeah, game play, play, play. And uh, you know, just check it out. It, it, it's definitely worth a few minutes for you guys to see whether or not it's something you'd be interested in. I think. But uh, yes, lots of great games, lots of great games, ladies and gentlemen. Can't complain. Well, everybody can complain, but there's so complain. many. They're gonna complain anyway. Yeah, yeah. There's there's so many games out there right now that are good. I mean, you there's you, you're not going to be at a loss. But the real question I have for you, Thicker Nation, even before we get off this topic, is are you going to be getting Final Stand DLC so I won't be running around shooting up people on Final Stand by myself on BF Patootie, Bifoti, 
whichever number I call it. <laughs> yes, and yes, and yes. I don't. I actually remember you calling me into getting the season pass. Yeah, man. So, so you so should I'm have to go right now, right? Uh, I, is it out yet? Yeah, it came out today. Oh, then I'm going I'm to download it later. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, premium members have access to it today. If you're not a premium oh, okay. member, then yeah, you I'm won't a premium have access member, so. it until next week, I think. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's the date I was looking. I thought it was like sometime in the future. Yeah, yeah, I have premium, so I will. I will. I should go. Actually, when this show is done, because I want to eat up on my band Smith. You know, uh, I'll uh, uh, I'll go download it. Say word. Say word. Say word. Say word. Get on there, because I need I need to get that. Because actually, you know what's so funny? Mm-hmm. What's funny? Thing, I, 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 I've been playing. You know, I've been playing Call of Duty. You know, I've been having a good time jumping around. Bust some people inside their head and all that fun stuff, uh-huh. and then I said, "Let me let me go play some Battlefield." And my God, I, like six months ago, I just thought those graphics were the jam, and they just look so not good. They look so plain <laughs> now, don't they? I mean, yeah, it's about like boring. a year old game, but still, it's like ew. <laughs> this doesn't look as good <laughs> yeah. as I thought it did. <laughs> what it did. <laughs> exactly. It's amazing how far you know the system has kind of come in terms of development. Just over the course of like a year, you know. A year, mean? yeah, pretty much. You know, it's cool. It's cool. But let's go ahead and move on so we can get this ball rolling for our agenda that we have here. Um, another kind of talking point that I kind of wanted to touch on today is some of the more recent news uh, that PlayStation has been, uh, uh, that Sony has been dishing out to the world. Um, that they are going to be dropping their own entertainment service, their own broadcast T, their cloud-powered broadcast TV service, the PlayStation View, launching in early 2015. Um, I'm, I'm interested to know what what you think about this, um, thinking Nation. I, you know, I, I got I got confused with all the stuff that PlayStation is putting out because mm-hmm. I think that TV thing tricked a lot of people. And it's not really a damn TV. It's just like. It, so, it's just something that they can plug in that basically is almost like on live, like Chromecast that'll allow them to be able to put PlayStation like services on your TV if you don't have a console on there. That's all. If you don't have a console, that, that, you got it. That's pretty much what it is. It's very small. You can take it from house to house, knock yourself out. Yes. Um, but this. I, I don't, but this, it's, I don't know. I get skeptical about all these things that, you know, these guys are trying to. Uh, to, to put out. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, like me as a consumer, I feel like I'm getting raped all the time <laughs> because they oh, it's it's like they always want cash from me. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's kind of the way I feel about it. It's like, you know, you get, you know, um, <laughs> you ever see the episode of Boondocks when Grandpa went and got his iPhone? <laughs> yeah. And he went into the Apple Store, right? And he uh-huh. told the dude. He want the lady on the iPhone with the with the laptop and the touch screen. So he has to buy three devices to get all the things he wants. Yep. Why can't you just put all those things in this one box and stop taking my paper? <laughs> and that's kind of the way I feel about it. You know, yeah. like a lot of these things you can like PlayStation TV, that could be an app. You know, it doesn't need to be anything more than that. That's an true. App. It's very and, true. And that's, you know, I mean, considering most TV smart TVs work, I mean, then most of them work with uh, Bluetooth, right? Yes. Yeah, considering they have that, you don't need the functionality of plug and play and all other kind of stuff. I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. There's there's something about it. Apparently, they felt they needed the little box. I don't yeah. Know. But just to kind of give people who don't know about PlayStation View, you know. A little bit of insight on what it actually is. This is the, this is from the uh, uh, press release that they released. Uh, when was it they released this? This was earlier this week. Was it earlier this week or? Yeah, it was early this no, week. No, no, no. I'm sorry. This was almost a week ago. Um, they were talking. Oh, I, I saw. I saw it yesterday. Yeah, I mean, well, people have been talking. To, you know, people have been writing articles about it because I think you know more people are actually seeing, it, you know, seeing pictures and stuff for it. But they released their press release for it. Uh, last week but it says here uh playstation view it leverages the power of the cloud to combine live on demand and catch up tv content viewers love the powerful user interface that delivers unprecedented personalization and simplicity 
It connects viewers to the content they want, helps them easily access favorite shows and channels, and recommends movies and shows based on viewing habits and what's trending. Um, their smart search feature narrows down results quickly and intuitively. Powerful explore function allows viewers to filter the entire catalog of live and on-demand content by program, genre, rating, popularity, length, and more. Um, you know, delivers all the on-demand stuff. So really the real question is with this, do I or do I not need my cable provider? And the answer is you do not need your cable provider. And during, and basically this is what they're saying. They're saying during the invite only beta, PlayStation View will initially offer about 75 channels per market from the following major programmers, including local broadcast stations, um, which include uh, CBS and CBS own um, TV stations, Discovery Communications, which includes Discovery, TLC, Animal Planet, uh, Investigation, Science, the Oprah Winfrey Network. Discovery yeah, yeah, Family it. Channel and like 11 more brands. Fox Network, which includes FX, FXX, FXM, National Geographic, uh, all their little sports channels, uh, the Yes Network, and um, the NBC Universal offerings, which have Telemundo, Regional yeah, Sports no, Network, gotcha, 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 gotcha. Uh, Bravo, CNBC. The E Network, Oxygen, Sprout, Sci Fi, USA, uh, the Scripps, Intera uh, Scripps Networks Interactive, which includes HGTV, Food Network, Travel, DIY, Cooking Channel, and also Viacom, which has BET, Country Music Television, Comedy Central, MTV, Nickelodeon, Palladia, Spike, VH1, and more. Um, Apparently, it will have different pricing and packaging details that will be re revealed later. And basically, it's supposed to be set up as a pay-for subscription TV type of service. You, what you see is what you pay for. There's no contracts. It's very flexible on a month-to-month -month basis without any hassles for cancellation of any part of the contract. There's no equipment no installation charges and it only of course it requires broadband internet service uh, to go along with your PS4 or PS3 system you don't need any additional equipment um, apparently the invite only beta preview starts in November and with a phase rolled out rollout starting in New York followed by Chicago Philly and LA and then eventually the service will be um, available on iPad and then later on more Sony and non-Sony devices and commercially it'll launch pretty much everywhere apparently um, during the first quarter of 2015. So this is I guess you would say the very first realization of the death of cable networks. Everybody's trying to do that. Right. Um, HBO has already said, you know, they've already announced that pretty soon, I think in December, I want to say, uh, that their HBO Go uh, service, you know, is going to be, you know, you won't have to have a cable. You know how before you have to have like a cable network in order for you to be able to have they access it right. to it. It's just a scrip subscription and you're good to go. Right. This, uh, you know, this version apparently will be available on new new current gen systems pretty soon and it's just going to be straight up if you want hbo go on all your devices you can pay for it you don't have to have cable service i think don't quote me on that but you can if you want to and i'll just be wrong <laughs> no you're no you're right there uh, you know i, I it's funny because uh me and my boss we actually talked a lot oh you did it's gonna be mm -hmm. yeah you know we saw this coming like a couple of years ago just the way things are going you know what's what's going to happen is your smart tvs are going to take over all those functionalities you yep. know and everything's going to be out of heart so you know hey i don't like this channel because technically I don't watch right it. now yeah i don't want to i mean like have half the stuff you get with basic cable you don't watch. you can care less yep you can care less. Mm -hmm. You really don't care if it's there or not. I mean, I probably watch maybe out of my basic cable channels, 
I probably watch maybe about 10, 10 channels that I'll actually subscribe to mm -hmm. and, and watch. And that would be like the ESPNs, the TNTs, you know, the ABCs for the games. And, you know, every once in a while, I geek out on the history. Or Walking Dead. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. And then I'll geek out on the history channel. And um, then FX, like, you know, FX for American Horror Story. Horror Story, you know, and, and, you know, those are just. The few, it's not it's not that many most of the stuff I just skip over it's just not even there you know it's not happening right and uh, you know I you know I think most people feel like you know even, even though you get you know you're paying for uh, internet and stuff like that and phone dude 150 bucks a month for those services that you don't even is killer most people like that it's killer and you're not even at home watching it yeah it's it's you know and, uh... and they're 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 so bad, like you know, like on they, top they, of having on top of having other subscriptions to stuff like Netflix or Hulu, because you know right. there's a lot of people that have cable, but they also have the you know digital subscription to subscriptions, right? This, and I'm one of those people. That. That I like you know, yeah. like when I can't watch like Flash, you know, and uh, you know um, Arrow, I'll I'll catch that, you know the follow, you know tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll watch it tomorrow night and do that. And that's worth it for me. I mean, like, the only reason why I have uh, cables is because I need, you know, I need to keep up with uh, the news and stuff in the morning for work. But if it was besides that and, you know, sporting events, that's that's the thing. Mm -hmm. But once, you know, like, I think ESPN already has, like, a, a free channel that you could just watch sports. Right. I think you so. Know? It's like, it's just online, right? Yeah, it's just online. You just watch it, yeah. you know? And you, if you got an ESPN app, which you probably can download on most uh, smart TVs, you're you're like good to go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, all you do is all you do is just pay for. You know what? Spend this fifty bucks and pay for the highest internet they got. Yep. You know, get like the fifty meg joint. Mm -hmm. You know, and just stream to your heart's delight. But you know what's gonna happen when people when a lot of people start getting on that bandwagon? You're not gonna have. Uh, they be like, okay, you know, after 250 gigs for the month, because streaming is going to take up a lot, they're going to be like, up, oh, it's going to be, uh, you know, this amount of dollars, you know. They're yeah. going to try to do, like, the cell phone thing. So, yeah. you know, I, I have a feeling that, you know, consumers are probably going to get screwed in that anyway. <laughs> uh, if there's one thing that you can always count on is even if there's change that we feel that there's going to be for the better, that these companies will find new ways to get your money so that even though you thought you were saving money, you end up not saving money. No. No, you're not going to. Yeah. I you mean, might save a little bit of money, but it's not going to be so much that you're just going to be like, uh, unless you just completely do away with it all. And, you know, there, and I know there's some people that have done it. I've got, you know, one of my cousins, he's, he's basically that way. He was like, he, you know what? All I need is internet. Just give me internet. That's it. And that's all he has. He doesn't have cable. Um, he doesn't have, you know, he he barely has subscriptions to, like, even Netflix and some other stuff. I think he has, like, Netflix and that's it. He might have Hulu, but that's it. You know? So he's, like, as unplugged as you can possibly be, you know? So. Yeah, the problem is, you know, what really stinks about that is, like, you need these things, you know? And it's, it's just a shame that, you know, you don't have more cable subscribers in town to to do it because it's like a game. What I used to do was like I'd uh, switch between providers to get deals and stuff. Yeah, like yep. every every like year and a half or so, you know, you see me switching lot. because mm -hmm. yeah, because you know I'll get you'll get the ninety nine dollar joint right, mm -hmm. and you get the hookup for a little bit, and then after that, when it go when it's down, it's not like it goes up like ten dollars. It goes up like freaking fifty bucks. It goes up a lot. You know, and then it's, it's like scary. you're at, yeah, you're like at 110, you know, with taxes and everything. And the next thing you know, well, hey, hold that, Mr. McNabb. Yay. Yeah. Hey, we want another $40 for the same stuff you got. And then when you try to like call them up and be like, hey, you know, can we work on something? You know what they're going to tell you? Lower the package that's already lowered. I know, right? <laughs> I'm and like, it's, uh, it, uh, I'll be glad. I'll be glad when there's, you know, it. I'm 100% certain that PlayStation is not going to be the only person or the only group that attempts this model and tries and to I provide hope it, this I model. I hope it's all of them because you know what? When they all do it, 
the prices drop because they're trying to do that. And you and the early adapters, when it's a good service, you actually make out for the for well, the little bit of time. Let me put that, it this uh, way. Let me put it this way. I'm hoping that's going to be the case because, as you well know, Jason, the second they start offering more choice, they might actually start offering more premiums on those choices as well. Right. So and that's can, where we're going to get screwed. Right, so that they can rationalize keeping the old model and saying, hey, you can pay for Showtime and HBO and, you know, the, the little package that has ESPN and maybe one other package, but if you get anything more, it's going to end up costing more than you're already paying for our bundle. You know, they, exactly. it, it's like they're going to they're gonna set it up in a way so that, yeah, you can get a few channels or a few networks or whatever and it be cheaper than having a regular cable bundle. But I bet you, I bet you, I bet you they're going to set up the pricing in a way where it's going to be close. I've just got yep. a bad feeling. That that's going to be the case, but I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to be a negative Nelly. This change is good. I'm interested to see how this comes out. Hopefully, it'll be something that a lot of people will be interested in, and a lot of other companies will use as a model. And I'm sure that now that PlayStation has announced it, that other companies are going to start announcing their initiatives and the timing for it and everything. So I'm interested. I'm eager. I'm excited. We'll see what comes of it. I, I hope something does good, does does good, does good. <laughs> the tag again. Double 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 Yeah, but double double is gonna tell us. I hope something good comes out of it because, I you know I just you know these these I just feel like you're getting lumped left and right. Yeah. And the thing is, you just you know for the amount of TV that people watch, it's not like me. Like, dude, I I hate giving up 150 bucks a month. And I barely watch TV. You know, I might get a couple of you know nights where I can get in there and get my clickety clickety clack on, mm. and and that's it. That's ba basically what I do. You know, I get in um, maybe an average of like what, a two. Well, I won't say that because when I come home, the kids are actually watching their channel until like maybe seven. So yeah, maybe I'll get like two and a half, two and a half hours a day at that. If that something like yeah, and and, and if you average it out, it's probably a lot less. You're probably looking maybe about an hour a day. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not you're not getting a lot of uh, a time where you can just uh, you know do what you want. You know, and you know even on the weekends, you know how much TV can you really get in? I get in I get in a decent amount on Sundays because on Sundays I chill out, I watch some football, I watch a movie, I watch some more football. Or I watch basketball, depending on, you know, the time, you know, when stuff comes on or whatever. <clears throat> but either way, you know, it, like I said before, it's it's an option. We'll see how it all plays out. You know, it's all data. Yes, sir. And you know how it's going to be. The second everything starts going through your internet, then, you know, they're going to start playing around with the internet packages and all the internet's going to start costing more because everybody's going to be watching TV off the internet and they're going to be like, oh, yeah, we'll just that, boost up the cost for the internet. You know, that's kind of what for. I think is going to happen. Yeah. So, so we'll see. We'll see. Like I said, blah, 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 blah. But, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to usher in a new revolution here on Geek Swag. This is something that we don't typically do. And it's something that I'm hoping we can make a bigger trend going forward. We're going to actually talk about Nintendo. <laughs> oh, good. N-I-N-T-E-N-D-E-O, Nintendo. Oh, boy. Nintendo. See. But, ladies Wait, and gentlemen, in case... No, they haven't. That's, that's what I'm trying to show you. That's why we're talking about <laughs> it right now. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I, I know... everything you say. Of course you are, because you're thinking. Um, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen... I'm certain, and Jason doesn't, he's, he's not a part of this crew, he's not a part of this mindset, but there are millions of people, millions of Nintendo fans out there that are all huddled around their Nintendo 3DSs on a regular basis, getting down on some Super Smash Brothers, and, you know, having a blast with the new Smash Brothers game and everything. And I think today is actually the release of a new component of the whole Nintendo universe that I think is actually pretty interesting called the Amiibos. 
And for those of you who do not know what an Amiibo is, Nintendo basically took a look at the whole Skylanders model. Um, they were presented the Skylanders model years ago, and they passed on it. And, uh, you know, as time went along, they saw how popular the whole Skylanders model went, and they decided, you know what? Fine. We'll take on a bit of this role, but we're going to change it up a bit. And honestly, when I saw the whole Skylanders thing pop off and how successful it's been over the years, I thought it was going to be more than it actually is. And from what I know about Amiibos, uh, Nintendo is actually doing with it what I thought Skylanders was actually going to be. So, just to let you guys know, um, Amiibos are basically uh, Nintendo's little figurine kind of thing, right? <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's, it's like this whole new trend. Um, it's this new trend of having a little toy that interacts with your video, with your video game. So, you know, they're all character based. So you can get Super Mario or Link from Zelda or Samus or Kirby or Star Fox or Donkey Kong or Pikachu or they're going to have 10 in this first round of uh, characters, right? And what the whole concept is, each one of these Amiibos, they have a little chip in them, right? And the chip has read-write has read write uh functionality to it right so it's this near what is it called this near proximity i forget what the name of the little technology is um, i know what you're talking about you know, you know what i'm talking about right it, you know you put yeah. it on top of the wii u gamepad and it like syncs up and it and does stuff, right? toy yeah and it, it does the same the thing with, that's in there right and it's got the same technology essentially that's in the little skylanders portal so um the whole concept is these little figurines are going to be tailored to work with one specific game in terms of read and write functionality, right? So say you buy Super Mario, and the Super Mario that you buy is for Super Smash Brothers. So the way it's supposed to work is as you're playing Super Smash Brothers, if you put Mario on the little pad or whatever, it'll add a little AI Super Mario into your game. Because, you know, in Super Smash Brothers, you can have, like, up to eight players playing at one time, right? right? So it can be you against your friend and some other dude, and then you put your little amiibo in there, and your new little amiibo will appear in the game as Super Mario. And essentially what will happen is your little Mario will fight. He'll learn tactics. You can train him. He'll go up levels. You can give him different pieces of equipment as you earn them or unlock them in gameplay. As he fights or whatever, he may earn or win equipment that you can equip him with and all this other kind of stuff. And he'll be like his, your little companion in that particular game. You can fight against him. You can use him to fight your friend or your friend's amiibo can fight against your amiibo. All this other kind of stuff, right? So... You know, that's, that's the, in my eyes, that's a more interesting concept than the way they have Skylanders, which is just, if you buy the figurine, it unlocks that character for you to play as, and the second you take that character off, you know, you can't play him anymore, and it, once you buy one, you know, Skylander, you basically don't have, you know, if you bought another Skylander that was the same one, you don't need it. You know what I mean? You know what I'm trying to say? It's like, if you've got two of the same Skylanders, they're going to end up giving you the same functionality. Whereas if you had two of the same Super Marios, they could end up being different. You know, you could equip them differently. They they would actually be different, right? And then, of course, they put the functionality in other games where um, if you if it's like Super Mario for Super Smash Brothers, then it will it'll have the read right for that game, but for the other games, it'll only have... Um, read functionality so it'll give you bonuses in other games if you like tag it on say mario kart or hyrule warriors or donkey kong or whichever the other games it'll give you bonuses just for having that particular character um so they'll have that functionality with each of these new um each of these new little figurines right and they're going to start tailoring them to each one of their games so like mario kart 8 will have tailored 
figurines, how the warriors are have figurines. And in my eyes, what they're really planning for that will, I don't want to say revive Nintendo, but it will definitely generate more interest is when they start dropping some serious Pokemon games for the Wii U. Because we all know the whole concept of Pokemon is to what, Thinking Nation? Act stupid. <laughs> no, come on, man. You know the tagline. Catch them all. You got to catch them all. Yes. I don't like Pokemon. Man. Yes, those, but there's I, lots of people those, that those, do. Those, you know what? Like those those card based games. It's not card based. And, uh, it's not card based. They are card based. The That's video games are not card based. Off of, the video games they're are not card based, but they're based off of those card games. Yeah, it's based off right? the card game, but. That's not what the video games are. The video the, games are uh, basically role playing games. Hey, you know what? The the joints great. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> shut up. There's millions of people that love it, whether you think a nation doesn't like it or not. So think a nation can shut up. Listen, listen, listen. They, this they is like where it, Nintendo is actually smart. <laughs> this is where they're actually smart. I actually think this is a good uh, idea for them. Hey, they may be corny. <laughs> I don't disagree with you, but this is an interesting concept. They are actually doing something with this, which is better than what the status quo is right now. They have a new way to get your money in a lot of pe- in a lot of the ways they that they've been doing. Money, I'll tell you that. <laughs> hey, they're getting a lot of the, uh, there are a lot of kids that like Pokemon, and the second these little toys come out and they start doing Pokemon amiibos, I'm telling you, it's gonna start hitting a lot of parents' pockets, and they're gonna hate it. <laughs> they're gonna tell like, but it, yeah. it's it's my yeah. thing is this. If you're going to have a figurine that has re- that has write capability or read write capability, make it work your while. Don't just give me a Skylander or give my child a Skylander that you just put on the put on the portal for them to play as that character. That's dumb. That's you could get away from buying the dang character and you could just say DLC for ten dollars you can play this character in the game. Boom, done. You know what I mean? To me, it's dumb to have to buy a character to put on a portal to say I can use the character in the game. It's pointless. The character doesn't do anything for you. All it has is a chip that says unlock, and that's all it does. Right? It doesn't make any... that The whole Skylanders concept, it just doesn't make any sense. That's why when I saw the way that these Amiibo figurines work, I see a lot more that they can do with this with multiple games outside of just the one game that they buy it for. You know? So there, there, there is actual actual innovation in how they've actually decided to utilize these amiibos and everything. And we will see whether or not it pays off. I don't think it's going to sell any more Wii U's, but it probably will sell a decent amount of characters for the existing 3DS. Like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? for the existing 3DS user base, which is pretty big. You know because what? there's I'm a lot of people. Right now. I'm interested to see what this, the Wii U sales are. <laughs> they're doing a little bit better. I mean, you know, with the Super Smash Brothers dropping, they're, you know, they're banking on Super Smash Brothers and, uh, you know, the recent release of Mario Kart or whatever to kind of boost it a little bit. But you know, the only problem I see with with that thought pattern for Nintendo is both of those games are available on the 3DS. You know what I mean? So it's like, since they're available on the 3DS, most people are just going to be like, oh, I've already got it on 3DS. I'm not going to get the Wii U so I can play it on the Wii U. You know? And it's the same thing for these Amiibos. They have all each one of these Amiibos, which will work on both the Wii U and on the uh, 3DS. I don't think it's available on the 3DS quite yet. I think it will be. But, um, you know, it'll work now with the Wii U. And they've even actually struck a deal with Loot Crate. Well, Loot Crate, you know, if you, for like a three-month subscription, you'll end up with receiving all ten of the first phase of these Amiibos um, for you to use, as well as giving you like, you know, how Loot Crate does. They give you like t-shirts and mugs and stickers and widgets and gadgets and gadgets and stuff that are all themed around, you know, a certain theme for that particular month, right? right. So, you know, they, they struck a deal with Nintendo and they have an Amiibo loot crate kind of subscription service that's like 150 bucks for um three months because each one of these figures i think costs like 15 or 13 dollars each or something like that so at 10 dollars each you know with all with the little extra exclusive stuff that loot crate will probably throw in the crate 
you know, people are getting a little bit more than what is what the ten characters really were. So you know, it's it's interesting concept. Um, I'll be more interested to see how the amiibo uh, universe is come this time next year, because right now I think most of these amiibos are only functional. You know, their read write is only for Super Smash Brothers, which. From my understanding, is a fantastic game. I keep telling you, a lot of people, you know, they're doing tournaments and stuff on this thing. A lot of people love it. It's getting, you know, it's gotten really high scores. Um, it's just a different kind of game. And um, it, it'll be interesting this holiday season to see the existence of, uh, you know, these new games that are actually pretty good like Hyrule Warriors, Mario Kart 8, and Super Smash Brothers, whether or not they'll actually sell uh, Wii consoles. Um, and with that, it'll be an easy segue into some quick uh, bundle news, some, uh, some quick uh, Black Friday news. Um, so, Thinking Nation, if you could please give me a little bit of assistance, we are going to try to see what bundles are available for all the different consoles for Black Friday? Um, let's see, Black Friday bundle deals. And what I and what I mean by is the I ones that I are. I saw some really good ones, and um, I had them listed. Let me just pull them up real quick. Yeah, and the ones I'm talking about are more so the ones that are like actually from Nintendo and Sony and. Uh, and uh, Microsoft, not the ones where, hey, you know, Walmart is throwing in, you know, an extra game and an extra, con you know, and an extra controller for their Walmart exclusive bundle. You know, I'm not talking about those. I'm talking more so like, you know, Xbox One's Assassin's Creed bundle that has, you know, Unity and Black Flag in it, as well as, um, you know, the PS4's bundle that had, because PS4 has a great bundle that I, you know, I'm hoping that I can con somebody into getting for me. Um, <laughs> it, let me see if I can find it. It has uh, well, GTA V and Last of Us. And Last of Us for mm -hmm. 400 bucks. For that's 400 bucks. Awesome that's an awesome, awesome, that's awesome deal. Awesome that's, probably, that's, probably, that's probably like a good 550 right there mm -hmm. if you were going to go buy that right now. Yep. That, that's an awesome deal. Yep. Um, if you didn't have it already, that's, that's the way to go. Yep. Um, I think there was another, you know, they of course have, uh, your standard, uh, Destiny bundle for PS4 that's always been out there. You have your Call of Duty Advanced Warfare bundle for Xbox One. That doesn't, I don't think that has, that's not the one with the Kinect, right? I forget no, which no. one of them is one, is the one with the Kinect. I can't remember which one it is, though. Um, I... You know what? I haven't seen I you know what? I haven't seen any bundle deals with the Kinect though. Yeah, there is. There is because it's it's one that they uh you know, it also has the $50 off, you know, pricing thing. Let me see if I can find it. Do, 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 do. Microsoft. Oh, hold on. Kinect Black Friday deals. Black Friday bundle deals for micro Swift. Where? Oh, yes, it's the Assassin's Creed uh, Unity Bundle. Unity! <laughs> Unity <laughs> that has Kinect, and it's for uh, four forty nine. That's not bad. Yep. So that's two games and the Kinect, which, you know, let's see. In truth, with two new games, that's like, two new games is like, what, 120 uh, uh, yeah, probably, yeah, with taxes, yeah. Yeah, so five, you're five. looking at almost a hundred and almost two hundred dollars in savings. Yeah, yeah, almost two hundred dollars in savings with that bundle. That's actually a really good bundle. Um, of course, there is the and that's a five hundred gig uh, drive that's on that one. Um, you know what? I did see one with the with the. Uh, the Sunset Overdrive. Yes, one. that was the one I was they had. About. Yeah, and it had it had a terabyte hard drive in it, which was actually good. Yes. So you got a double the disk space, which was nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, they got the Master Chief 
one for three twenty nine. I didn't even know they had one of those, but that was the one I was saying that if Microsoft was going to yeah. be selling anything, well, it's not an actual that's right. the bundle. Yeah, it's not an actual. It's it's just the game with the Master Chief. Mm. I see that one at Walmart. Um, they got the same thing with uh, Assassin's Creed Unity. So mm. you, you know, you can pick that up. Xbox One, no connect. You know, uh, controller. Um, they actually have some pretty good deals on gaming headsets. I also see too, mm -hmm. um, which looks pretty good. And here, here's here's some other things too to go with. You know, go side with that with TVs. Right now, well, not now, but on Black Friday, they're gonna have at Walmart, and I love this deal: six forty eight, sixty five inch smart TV, Vizio. Very good brand. I own a Vizio sixty inch myself smart TV. I got it last year at Walmart. For six hundred bucks, six hundred forty-eight dollars for a sixty-five inch smart TV. That's that's an awesome buy right there. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you got the cash, get your X Bone or your PS Four, and you throw it on that guy. That's 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 a good holiday right there, right? There. You know, you are not even gonna need Christmas. Hey, just give me some games for Christmas. That's <laughs> basically what yeah. you know, what you're gonna be saying. So you know that those are good things to look out for too. You know, TVs. Are, are you know they got some hot TVs out right now too so you know get on those too you know they got some really good deals if you if you want them yep so it looks like I'm I'm just kind of scanning through some of these bundles um, like uh, when it comes to when it comes to DS bundles uh, just between some of the different stores that they've announced, it looks like the cheapest you'll be able to get a DS, a 3DS, will be at Sears and Target, um, which are offering the 2DS for 100 bucks on Black Friday. And it looks like Kohl's is offering, Kohl's and Walmart are offering the cheapest bundles for the 3ds xl at 150 dollars and a part of me wants to splurge on that but i don't know if i'm going to be able to you know what um, i was looking at you say any p i've been looking for some vita stuff see what they got there yeah yeah because um, i'd be getting one of those oh yeah um it looks like uh, the PlayStation bundles, you aren't going to really be able to find a PS4 for cheaper than 400 bucks, which is smart. You know, they there's no need for them to drop the price. You either get it or you don't. Um, but most of the Black Friday deals, it looks like the only bundle that they'll be doing are either the Last of Us Remastered and GTA 5 bundle or the Super Intelligent Little Pl Big Planet 3 and Lego Batman 3 bundle, which will be at Toys R Us. I think that's a great bundle to get. Those are two great family games to have for those of you who have shillings like yours truly. Yes. <laughs> and yours truly on the other side. <laughs> yes, yes. The chillings, the chillings. Um, and I also see some iPad mini deals here. Uh, 199 Yep. Not a bad deal. 16 gig. And that's, you know, with the Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. um, 50 inch uh uh, TV, two eighteen at Walmart. It's not, it's not a brand name, but you know, day fifteen for two eighteen. That's not bad either. So mm -hmm. they, they're gonna have some really good deals out there. I, I I suggest anybody that you know. I've been shopping around myself. You know, anybody that wants anything good, I would hit up Walmart, Target. Yep. Believe it or not, have some fantastic deals. Yep. They they have some really competitive stuff out there. Best Buy. Um, if you have a PC, Richard and Son, you know Sears. Believe it or not, Sears have some fantastic deals yep. out there. So you know, check those guys out too, and, and uh, see what you can get. Looks like the cheapest Black Friday bundle deal for a Wii U is at Toys R Us so far, with a Skylander Swap Force bundle for a Wii U at two hundred bones. Wow. Everywhere else, it looks like, you know, they're just one of those bundles that has, uh, you know, you get a game and then like a little price, a little bit off of the main price of two ninety nine. So, doesn't look like there's a whole lot going on with the Wii U in terms of bundles. But hey, you never can tell; they may drop something. But 
Ladies and gentlemen, let's keep it moving here. That's Black Friday for you. Um, what I kind of wanted to do is uh, just kind of quick do a quick hitter on some of the comics that have been coming out lately. Um, as you guys know, Captain America is um, done. the Falcon now. Uh, I actually did manage to go and get my copy. Here's the Here's my copy right here. And um, it's called the all-new Captain America. It's not just called Captain America. But um, I've read it, and honestly, Marvel's kind of at this stage now where so many of their titles are, like, running into each other because of, you know, they, they always do these grand, massive story arcs that go between titles and everything. So me personally, I was... Just as someone who jumped into the series cold, saying that hey, I'm buying an, I'm buying issue number one, um, you know, I want I just want to see where they're going to take the storyline. It was kind of hard to even jump into the storyline because they referred to so many other story arcs that came before this one, and honestly, not even that much happened in this first issue. You know, basically all they did was set the table and show that, uh, of course, Captain America is retired now. He lost all of his uh, his uh, super soldier serum. You Yeah, at, in a fight with uh, who was it? He was fighting with. Um, I forget who it was. He was fighting with, but he was you know fighting one of his iconic villains. Um, he got drained uh, of his super soldier serum, so he decided to take it easy. He got married. He was you know everyone thought that he was going to hand the shield over to his son, who's named Nomad. But uh, apparently he doesn't trust Nomad's character because Nomad is, uh, you know, he runs around with guns and stuff. So he's probably a shoot first, ask questions later kind of kid. Um, but of course, he's not a kid. He's, you know, he's a young adult now. And he's doing his thing uh, as part of the event. Well, I don't know if he's officially a part of the Avengers, but yeah, he's kind of doing his own Avengers kind of superhero thing as part of like a special forces team, right? Um, so, like, he's running around with, uh, Falcon, a.k.a. Captain America, and, uh, you know, they're just kind of showing, uh, Cap, the new, all-new Captain America not quite being comfortable with the use of the shield, and, you know, throwing it and using it, but the actual story and where the storyline's going to go with it is still kind of ambiguous a little bit. You know, he's still going after Hydra. Um, so it, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Not a whole lot happened in this first issue of All New Captain America, but I'll be interested to see what happens. But what I thought was more interesting was the very first issue of Captain America and the Mighty Avengers. And because this goes into a story arc called Axis that Marvel has right now. And Jay, you might actually be interested in this one. Um, apparently what happened was uh who was it red skull was had done something to professor x where he like took over professor professor x's mind um and the scarlet witch and doctor doom actually had to do something pretty significant in order to pull professor ba x back and to push red skull out but in whatever process that they did, apparently um, whoever was in that particular area at the moment that they did it, they were, they were affected. Their personality was like affected. And um, a majority of the Avengers that were in the area at the time, like uh, Luke Cage and She-Hulk, uh, Spider-Man and uh, White Tiger and a few of the others, they weren't, you know, they were... I don't want to say cured, but they were they were dealt with in a way where they were able to gain their personalities back. But apparently, uh, Captain America, the new Captain America, and Iron Man were adversely effect affected. So the way they kind of have Captain America in this one, or the Falcon rather, is he is acting more like you know how they wrote the whole Dark Knight comics where Batman yeah. was, like, beating the crap out of people and leaving them bloody and everything. 
you know, he was still bringing him to justice, but he was like going to the extreme in terms of bringing justice. That's kind of hurt. <laughs> yeah, he was putting a world of hurt on people. That's kind of the way that uh, Captain America is in this. Um, you know, it's like it's brought out an extreme aggression in him, and he is kind of partnering with Tony Stark, who is reverting more so back to the. The, asshole Tony Stark. Yeah, the asshole Tony Stark, <laughs> where he was the superior, and that's, and it's funny. I actually have. Let me see if I have it. Coming. They actually named the new comic for the new Iron Man the Superior Iron Man, because that's how he envisions everything. And honestly, this first issue of Superior Iron Man, I love, because basically Tony Stark has, um, you know, he's. He's come off of another one of those instances where he saved the world, right? Or saved San Francisco specifically. And what he did was he distributed this app called Extremis 3.0 to all of San Francisco for free. And basically what Extremis 3.0 does is it turns everyone in basically into a bigger and better you. You know, it turns everyone into a supermodel and all this other kind of stuff. So people were happy. They were excited. You know, they were like, I'm a better me. I'm smarter. I'm faster. I'm more fit. I'm healthier. And this is all thanks to Iron Man. And he did this for all the inhabitants of San Francisco. So, you know, he everybody loves him and everything. So, you know, you're wondering, OK, well, why did he do that at the beginning of the issue? And, of course, I'm sorry, spoiler alert for those of you guys who don't know. I'm telling you exactly what happens in the issue. But um, I guess I will let you guys figure out what happens at the end of the issue. But I love the twist that they have on Tony Stark in this issue. Because, I mean, basically they're turning him back into a superior asshole. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's tied in to the... The other one that I just showed you, the Captain America and the Mighty Avengers, um, and then spoiler alert, um, because Tony Stark and this new aggressive uh, Captain America are kind of teaming together um, in, a, in a way that is kind of excluding the rest of the Mighty Avengers. So it's it, it'll be interesting because it, it kind of plays off of another storyline that just ended uh, not too long ago in the Spider-Man comics. Um, and I know you love Spider-Man, Picky Nation. Spider-Man! Um, I don't know if you heard about it. They had a series not too long ago called uh, The Superior Spider-Man. No. Where um, basically what happened there, uh, Doc Ock was about to die. And like he figured out a way that he could um, swap personalities or swap his mind with Peter Parker's. So basically, Peter Parker became Doc Ock and then died. And then Doc Ock actually became Spider-Man. But when he became Spider-Man, he actually took on all of Peter Parker's memories, his experiences, and all this other kind of stuff, right? So instead of him just deciding, hey, I'm finally Spider-Man, I can do what I want as an evil leader of, you know, the Sinister Six, and I can make Spider-Man evil, he actually sees all of the benefit of, you know, having, being responsible with the power that he holds. So he actually turns, sort of, turns a new leaf. I guess you could almost say it isn't 100% turned. <laughs> he's still, <laughs> you know, he's still Doc Ock, but he's he actually wants to try to do good. So he's kind of, he's kind of in the same boat as I guess you could say uh, the aggressive Captain America is. He kind of uses his power for good, but he's a little bit too aggressive with it. And um, he ends up almost killing some of the new uh, Sinister Six in his first encounter in uh, the Superior Spider-Man. I've only started reading like the first few issues of it, so um, a lot of people already know about the storyline. But, um, you know, it's, it's interesting just to kind of see how uh, Doc Ock kind of struggles with deciding to be good and then later on in the comic peter parker's i guess spirit or whatever is actually battling with doc ock and preventing him from killing people so you know it, it it's kind of you know it's an interesting storyline because i think 
Um, at the end of the Superior Spider-Man, he ends up doing some pretty bad things in the name of Spider-Man. And the, the um, I guess the fallout from the Superior Spider-Man is actually taking place at the beginning of these Avengers comics that they're doing now. So Peter Parker is finally back as Spider-Man, but everybody remembers all the bad that he did when Doc Ock was there. And they still haven't forgiven oh, okay. him for it. They haven't forgiven him for it because they know that Peter Parker was there, you know, trying to influence Doc Ock. So, you know, it was partially his fault that a lot of those bad things happened because he couldn't stop Doc Ock from doing it. You know, so he's struggling with a lot of that now currently in the comic book. So it's interesting. I, they're doing some interesting things with Iron Man and, and Spider-Man and the Avengers and everything. It'll be interesting. I haven't had a chance to read the... Uh, the new Thor to see what they're doing with the new uh, the new female Thor, but I'm going to try to jump into that and dig into that. Um, I'm also reading the uh, Prometheus comics, which uh, okay. I haven't had a chance to finish. I've just bought the third issue out of four. Um, I haven't read it yet, but um, you know they they basically started a series called Fire and Stone where they're linking Prometheus, Aliens vs Predator, Aliens and Predator, all those comic book storylines into like a four issue miniseries oh. and they're all tied together and uh, like the Prometheus comics are actually taking place right after the movie so they're talking about some of the events that happen where another science team comes into the same planet um, where you know the initial Prometheus crash landed and it kind of continues yep. the storyline but it actually ties the storyline to um, the colony at uh, LV, what is it? Uh, LV. The one from Aliens. It basically oh, ties okay. it to that, saying that there were actually survivors that escaped the planet before the Xenomorphs killed just about everybody there. And they ended up crash landing on Prometheus, on the same planet that Prometheus was, was on. Really? Yeah, so it's kind of interesting to kind of see how they you know, bring the actual xenomorphs that we know to the same planet that are, you know, that Prometheus is on and all the engineers and stuff. So they have something big that they're going to have where, like, the engineer is going to face off against a predator, is going to face off against an alien, you know, the <laughs> alien. So it's, it, they're going to mash it all up in, like, one big miniseries. And it's, it's kind of interesting how it's playing out. So uh, definitely go check that out, ladies and gentlemen. Dark Horse Comics, Prometheus, they they got some cool things going on there. I'm trying to read through a lot of those. It's a lot of stuff. But um Uh, you got any news you wanted to, to jump in and jump in on there, Thicken Nation? I have some other stuff here we can talk about, but I wanted to make certain that I didn't, you know, steal the spotlight, because you know how I love the spotlight. I love to hear yes, myself I talk. Do. Love Spot to hear myself up. talk. I really don't have anything else, you know, just Good, we can talk about me. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Anything, you know, throw some topics out there. I can usually comment and crush your dreams okay. on most things. I've got a good one for you. I got a good one for you. We are going to talk about, because I know last episode we kind of talked a lot about uh, the Marvel movies. We didn't yeah. really give much time and uh, information on some of the DC movies that are coming. No, we didn't. Um, or some of the Fox movies that are coming out. Fox or Sony. And those are outside of the arena of Marvel Studios. So, let me run down. I'll run down the list of some of these other movies. And I'll, get your, I'll just get your quick input on them. So, we've already talked about uh, next year with Age of Ultron, Ant-Man, and uh, Fantastic Four coming out next year. But in 2016, what we have early on, we'll have the first Deadpool movie. I'm excited for that. Yeah, it'll be in. I, I'm a big, big Deadpool. Yeah, oh, Deadpool is craziness. Uh, that that'll just be comedy on a you know on a platter. They, uh, you know what you know what I would love to see. I would love to see um, them actually put. You know them actually have somebody. Uh, that you could do something like maybe even add a comedian to just do the voice and have somebody else do <laughs> the actual character. 
You know, have something something crazy like have Dave Chappelle actually be Deadpool. You know, the <laughs> voice of Deadpool and have somebody else, you know, like a stuntman or something like that just be Deadpool or something like that. Because, you know, Deadpool's always got his mask on, so it's not like you can't, can see his face anytime. You can right. see his mouth move. I, I think that would be crazy. I doubt they'll do anything stupid like that. Because, of course, I thought of it. So, um, But, yeah, I'm excited it's about going? that. Yeah, it's going. Um, I'm excited about it too. I, I haven't. I don't read that much of Deadpool. I, you know, a lot of times I'll catch him in other series and stuff like X Force or something like that, where he's like a big character. I don't really read the Deadpool comics, but you know, he's always enjoyable in anything I've seen him in. Um, of course, the one that we know of, the Batman vs Superman: Dawn of Justice movie that is coming out in 2016. Right. We're all excited to see what Bamfer looks like. Yeah, yes. Um, of course, we talked about Captain America, X-Men Apocalypse. Um, of course, in 2016, we'll have Suicide Squad, which we're hearing will actually have a new version of the Joker. I don't think they've officially cast it yet, but... In the last episode, we did talk about uh, the lady that they cast for Harley Quinn. I don't think they've announced anybody else as part of Suicide Squad yet, though. Um, we talked about Doctor Strange. Uh, later on that year, though, they will have... Uh, Sony will have the Sinister Six movie. Which I haven't heard a whole lot about yet. And I know you'll be excited about that. Yes, I will. Spider Fitness. Um, then apparently in 2017, we are supposed to have yet another Wolverine sequel. Yeah, uh, I don't know. They need to let that go. Yeah, the last one was kind of dull. Um, apparently... Was, the last one wasn't horrible, horrible, but like... It was yeah. just dull. It wasn't yeah. horrible, it was just dull to me. It was a little bit too much feels. You know, you've got Wolverine. He's supposed to be hacking and slashing through most of it. And instead, they got him making love, rolling around, and being all, <laughs> and, you all know, sexy. Yeah, being all <laughs> sexy and stuff. And crying. I was uh, like, nah, this ain't Wolverine. Um, of course, they have the next Guardians of the Galaxy 2, which will be in 2017. They will have uh, Wonder Woman as well. They'll have the new reboot of Fantastic Four. Uh, they will have. We talked about Thor. We talked about Black Panther. They will have Justice yeah, League you, Part One. Black Panther? Oh, uh, Black, we talked about Black Panther. They will have. Uh, yeah, yeah, I forgot. Chadwick Boseman, the guy who plays uh, um, Jackie Robinson in Forty Two. Did you see that movie? Okay. Yes, I, I like 42. That yes, he, he played Jackie Robinson. So the guy who played Jackie Robinson is going to be uh, uh, Black Panther. Um, I hope he could do the African accent. Yeah, well, yeah, we'll see how that whole thing goes. Um, Justice League Part 1 will be in 2017. Uh, apparently, Sony is planning a couple of the Spider-Man spinoff movies also to happen in 2017. Uh, whether or not they've confirmed them or not, I'm not 100% certain, but right now it's rumor that the Spider-Man, the Spider, I don't know if it's going to be Spider-Girl or Spider-Woman or just a Spider-Man, a female Spider-Man or what, I don't know. It's going to be some Spider-Man spinoff that Sony is doing in 2017. There's not a whole lot of details about it, apparently. Um... And they did say that they were going to do some kind of Venom or Venom slash Carnage movie, but um, I'm not 100% certain if they confirmed exactly that it's going to be in 2017, but, you know, the very first date that people heard was 2017 for that. Um, in 2018, apparently DC is going to have a Flash movie. Yeah, the, the dude from... Uh... The dude from the TV dude show was that, pissed. Yeah, he was from the Arrow. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the TV show came out first. It's been doing well. And for them to do a Flash movie before they do a Green Arrow movie is just kind of a slap in his face, apparently. 
And I don't blame them. I mean, it's doing well. Arrow is doing excellent. It's yeah, a great it's a show, show that I haven't watched yet. And, um, <laughs> and you know, it, you should, it's just you one should of those watch things. that. I, I want to. Watch. I, I just it, haven't it's... taken the time to say, I'm, dude, I'm like right in the middle of trying to finish watching American Horror Story and, and uh, you know, Walking Dead. And, you know, as soon as those shows go off the air in like another week or so, I'll be able to catch up with Arrow and Gotham and all that other kind of stuff over the holidays. But, yeah, um, I'm watching uh, Kobe takes jump shots. <laughs> Kobe sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Does <it? laughs> Yeah, he does. Um, also, in 2018, they will have um, Aquaman with Jason Momoa as the lead in that movie. Yeah, I'm interested to see how he does in that. Yeah, I think he'll do all right. Because all I can think of him is Carl Drago. Carl Drago. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Amazing Spider-Man 3 apparently is scheduled to be uh, out in 2018. Yes. Uh, the new Shazam with The Rock is supposed to be out in 2019. Uh, that's that's going to be disgusting. Yeah, there's no telling how that's going to be. <laughs> um, also that year, they will have the second part of Justice League, apparently. And the latest additions to the DC Comics roster of movies is a Cyborg movie in 2020, as well as their reboot of Green Lantern. Who's going to play Green Lantern this time? I don't think they've said anything yet. Because I'm wondering whether or not they're even going to have him do a bit part in the... You know, in the Batman versus Superman, you know, Dawn of Justice, because you know they're going to have bit parts for most of the Justice League characters in that movie. So I don't know. They're going to have to. Yeah, I don't know if they've announced whether he's going to be in it or whether it's going to be a surprise or you know, I don't know yet. But we'll see. So DC, it's very interesting to see. Sony, don't mess it up. Spider Man, we love Spider Man. Don't mess it up, please. You mean any worse than what they did with uh, the last Spider-Man? Yeah, it was garbage. But whatever, there are people who like it. I do not. I'm sorry. I was never that big of a Spider-Man fan anyway, but whatever. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But, ladies and gentlemen, before we go today... It's the time you have all been waiting for. It's Adventures in Bungeoneering. Yay! Shut up, Dickie. This is my time. I time. did not say anything. Oh, you saw my time. Yeah, I saw your <laughs> eyes roll and all that other kind of stuff. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, or for those of you who don't know, I am an engineer. And it is my duty, my responsibility to be an advocate for engineering and science and technology. Yeah. Shut up, Jack! <laughs> for science, technology, engineering. Uh, in math, which uh, the lovely people here at Ladies of the Round Table, they are champions of. They have their own charity where they're doing a lot of, of work to raise money for scholarships um, for women to go into the fields of science, technology, engineering, and math because we need y'all. We need everybody. We need innovation. Innovation is something that is very, very lacking here in America. We are. Lo- I don't want to say we're losing ground to the other. To the other, you know. We are losing ground to the other countries. To the other countries, but th- that's basically what it is. You know, innovation isn't coming from America anymore, uh, like it used to. We need to bring that back, and that's how we're going to bring our economy back: is to have new jobs, to create new jobs, and the way you create new jobs is through innovation. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's what engineers are all about. We take problems, we solve them. So, what I'd like to do is introduce you to two very, very interesting engineering achievements that have been uh, reported recently. Uh, There's a nice uh, website that I go to every once in a while called interestingengineering.com. And they had a very, very nice article about a new technology um, that actually is an old technology. It's something that's been used in different forms and in different ways, but engineers have taken this old technology and have figured out a way to apply it in a much more miniaturized form. And it is called the Fontis Self-Filling Water Bottle, which basically makes water from thin air. 
it what it does is it takes um, you take this uh, little device you put it on your bicycle and you attach a good you know you attach like a little one liter uh, or 500 mil you know a five, uh, like your regular water bottles you plug it into this little device and as you ride your bike around it takes the moisture out of the air and it feels and it basically does it at a rate of about let's see what rate does it say it does it in 1.21 gigawatts no you <laughs> I hate you um <laughs> you are ridiculous um i i can't even find it oh i'm sorry uh 0.5 liters in every hour so that's basically half a water bottle an hour I think that that's right, or is that a water bottle an hour? No, I think it's about. Ha I think it's half a water bottle an hour, something like that. Just, how much does this cup cost? <laughs> I don't know. Well, right now I don't think the device is on sale quite yet because they just, you know, they just finished doing prototypes and proving that it works, and saying that they, you know, are getting to a point where they will actually be able to uh, start producing. You know, they have to go from this prototype. They have to do the testing, and then they actually t have to turn that prototype into something that they can manufacture. And that whole process goes, you know, it takes engineers a while in order to make it into something that will be uh, cheap to make, that will also be sturdy enough to be able to be on somebody's mountain bike, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and work, as well as uh, be cheap enough that people won't, look at it and say oh my gosh i'm paying 200 dollars just to get me some water bump that you know what i mean i'll just get bottles exactly um so it's interesting though because they're actually they're actually it's taking uh it's got little solar panels on it also so it'll take the heat from the solar panels and it'll make water Awesome. And uh, you know so they're they're looking at using this te same technology in different scopes in different sizes so it'll be able to be used in places that are scarce for water which will be really really interesting so you know it's harvesting water out of the air which is you know awesome so yes engineers are doing things like that and another quick one is that i thought was pretty interesting is uh there's a company um, I, I don't even know what they're called. I think they're called Aero or Aero Mobile or something like that. Apparently, they've developed the very first advanced prototype flying car. And it's not quite what you think. It's not a Jetsons mobile or anything like this. But it's, you remember that cartoon mask back in the day, Jack? Yeah. They had like the car where you press a little button and the wings would flip up and all of a sudden the car would start flying. It's almost something like that. You know, you've got you've got like a little two seater car that has two wheels in the front, and it looks almost like a, it all it looks almost like a, um, I don't want to say a motorcycle, a weird looking motorcycle, but it's slim. You know, it's slim like a little electric car, but it has like a long back, so that it can have all the airfoils for when it actually flies, and it's got two wheels in the back, and then it has retractable wings. So, you know, you put the retractable wings out, and if you have long enough of a runway or a street or something like this, this thing can get up to speeds in order to actually take off. So, as you can imagine, you still need a, um, you know, you still need a flight license in order to drive this flying car. But um, it parks in normal parking spots and can be filled up in regular gas stations. You don't have to have, like, jet fuel or anything like that. This thing runs <laughs> off a of regular... It runs off a of regular gas. And, um, oh, 87, huh? Yeah, you know, well, I don't know if it's 87. You know, it doesn't have all that information here in, in this article. But, you know, still, it's a prototype. You know, it runs off of regular gas. You can get everywhere, and it flies, which is interesting. So, uh, yes, adventures in Bungeoneering, ladies and gentlemen, we engineers are doing some amazing things out there. We're trying to solve a lot of the problems out there. We're making water out of thin air. We're making jets and cars. We're making hoverboards. We're making fuel cells. We're doing all kinds of stuff. It's fantastic. Engineering. 
making chicken. Yeah, we're making chicken. No. Cats and dogs living together. <laughs> Mass hysteria. <laughs> <laughs> but, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I think that's probably a good episode because, like I said before, I'm eager to get into this Dragon Age. I really want to get into this thing. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Dirty Helmato, tell the people what you got going on, what you got coming up, what you're getting into. Same thing, YouTube, coming at you. So, what is your what reviews. is your YouTube uh, handle or whatever it's called? I don't know what it's called. What is the like YouTube thing? Uh, it'll be called Helmet's Room. Helmet's Room. And, okay. Right. <laughs> it's gonna be a room where Helmet does stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't sound right. <laughs> Don't it? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it's going to be off the hook. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the hook itch. Okay, uh, that's good. So, well, how um, about this? Tell people what you will, in the coming week, what you'll be playing. and Or what you might coming, be uploading. Like, what you'll be playing on Twitch and what you'll be uploading on I'll probably be doing uh, some a lot of Dragon Age um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Inquisition. I've already started, so when I get a good handle on things, I'm gonna gonna do some uh, live stream there. You're also gonna get some video play from that. Mm-hmm, some mm-hmm. Uh, and you get some epic Call of Duty battles. Nice. You'll see me at work. Mm-hmm. Just, just he he likes to think up. he he could almost be pro, but ladies and gentlemen, he's. No, I, I'm I'm He's going for the ultimate scrub. That's what I'm going for. Going I'm going for the ultimate, the ultimate scrub. No, I, ultimate scrub. no, I don't think you can beat me in that title. I have like the ultimate death kill ratio. That's what I name all my tweet, <laughs> Twitch feeds. I have like the ultimate death kill ratio sign. That's what I'm going for to be the ultimate scrub. I'm going to be the best scrub on, on Call of Duty, and it's it's just going to be it's going to be fantastic. I'm going to be off the hook. Right? Craziness, craziness, that's right? So but that's what people got to look forward to, baby. Fantastic. So, um, as you can imagine, Makita isn't here. <laughs> I, I I really really do hope Makita is okay. I'll have to text her. Yeah, we got to reach out to her later. Make sure she reach out good. and make certain everything is okay with her. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, definitely keep your eyes on Zombie Gamer Online. Uh, you can find Makita and her band of merry writers <laughs> there on that website. She also has, uh, like I told you earlier, she's been playing the indie game that I want to play. Um, this War of Mine. I think, yeah, that's what it's called, right? This War of Mine. This War of Mine. Yep. And um, she she has uh, been doing a marathon on that on her YouTube. So go check out Grim Freaker's YouTube. I'll definitely have the link on Pete Swag, on Heed Mag dot com backslash geek swag with two g's i'll have the link there so you guys can easily go check it out um i think that's all she's been playing on there recently but i'm certain if you guys stay tuned to her she'll let you know um what else she'll try to do some twitch sessions for um me personally i have a couple of reviews from the great people at tecmo koei um the uh warriors orochi Three ultimate review I think should be up soon. I don't know if I'm gonna do a review on it quite yet. I'm, I mean a video review on it quite yet. I might. I don't have a whole lot of time to put into doing that. Um, but I am trying to work on a review for the Samurai Warriors Four. Um, I've done a couple of I've done a couple of Twitch sessions of that. You'll probably see me do a few more this week uh, for Samurai Warriors Four as well as for Dragon Age. Um, as well as for what was the other one I was going to do some Twitch stuff for uh, Grand Theft Auto 5 I'm going to do some first person perspective Grand Theft Auto 5 when I upload my my old uh, save file just to see what it's like to go to the strip club in GTA 5 in first person view the velocity <laughs> <laughs> you know what we haven't given the people what did we, we give haven't given no also, ultimate NBA battle and yeah, we, and we gotta figure out some time frames, and you know how it gets when it gets around when it gets around uh, Thanksgiving. You know, it's I may actually be home this Thanksgiving, so I might actually have some time. I'm to, definitely gonna be home. Yeah, to do some NBA battles. So y'all stay tuned for that. You know, me and Thicker Nation may actually have some Thanksgiving 
uh, some Thanksgiving battles going on there. That's right. Cold blood. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I am actually going to try to see if I can get uh, this war of mine, hopefully this week. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it before next week, but we'll see. And definitely, definitely, at least one day, I'm going to play some BF Patootie, BF Pafote, Final Stand. So stay on my Twitch channel. I'm going to have all kinds of games streaming this week. I'm going to be up late. I'm going to be red-eyed. I'm going to be <laughs> sleepy at work. Crying. I'm going to hate myself for it, but I'm going to be happy. But, ladies and gentlemen, that's what we do here. It's Geek Swag. If there's comic books that you guys can suggest to me to read or anything, definitely let me know. I'm, I'm back in the swing of things. I'm trying to read more because reading is fun for mentals. Um, I love comic books. I used to read them all the time, and now I'm getting back in the swing of things. Comicsology is my friend. I love it. Yeah, um, so yes, definitely, definitely, uh, you know, let me know some other cool titles to read if you guys know of any, um, you know, you've seen and heard the ones that I'm interested in recently. I'm trying to get in some more. I'm trying to catch up on Walking Dead. Um, I'm trying to catch up on Civil War. I still haven't read that story arc in Marvel yet. Um, cause you know, they're going to redo all that stuff anyways. I haven't read... Uh, Age of Apocalypse yet, so I bought that recently. I gotta read through that. I'm actually reading uh, like Black Panther graphic novels also because I didn't used to read uh, Black Panther comics at all. So I'm reading a few of those now. Um, they're pretty cool. They're pretty good stories. Um, maybe I'll I'll dish some spoilers, but they aren't spoilers because they were written like five years ago. Um, kind of <laughs> reviews later on some other time. But uh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, Geek Swag, there's a lot going on. I'm hoping and praying our friend Kay Murdoch will be able to join us next next week, as well as Makita. I know she's kind of been away the last couple of weeks. I know you guys are eager to see her, eager to hear her, her unfiltered opinion on all things geek-related. Um, but ladies and gentlemen, that's the show. We are Geek Swag. I am your boy, Bunny3000, along with... The thickness, the thickness, the thickness, the <laughs> thickness. <laughs> and we are Geek Swag from Heat Mag. Thanks to all the people at Ladies and Roundtable. Thank you guys for having us here on the channel. And ladies and gentlemen, we are about to go uh -huh. cookie clack on some Dragon His Age. Bioware, we love y'all. That's right. Fans, we love y'all. Peace. DLCs. We are out.